morning, church. Good morning. Please stand for the call to worship. How shall we live when shadows gather? Drawn to God's unquenchable light, we are also drawn into one another's presence. What was hidden has been revealed. We are woven together with all creation. When we live in the light, as God is in the light, we are one with each other. Let us worship God, who is our light and salvation. Church. I'm Lou Ann Harrell. I'm the lay leader here at Tuscaloosa. And on behalf of Reverend Harding, who is away on vacation this week, I welcome you to this, or, this service of worship. If you're joining us online, please drop your name in the chat box so you can be properly greeted. I have just a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, just a reminder that on Wednesday night, there is a, a book study going on that is led by Bob Putnam. And it is uh, based on the C.S. Lewis book, The Screwtape Letters. Uh, there were a couple of um, notes on the sign-in table out front, but if you're interested in joining, that's on Wednesday night at 5.30, and it meets in the faith room. Is that correct, Bob? Okay. And all are welcome, so come on out and join him. I'm sure it's an excellent study if Bob's running it. <laughs> okay. The next thing is we're going to start a new sermon series beginning April the 14th, having a sense of rest and abundance with our resources. It's called Sabbath Economics. So make sure that you stay tuned for that and come out and join us. Now, if you will take a moment and greet each other with the peace of Christ.
the kids who want to come up and join me. Come on. Good morning. <coughs> She's coming. <laughs> I like your pink dresses today. Are those new shoes? What doll they fit? Oh, you wore boots instead, but now they fit you? So you can wear them? Awesome. All right, how are you guys this morning? Good? Be awake this morning? Barely, I, I could tell. Um, that's okay, I'm barely awake this morning too. But um, we're going to talk about a really cool story today. I want you guys to think about, if you're sitting here just right now, What's something that you could do to change maybe how you look? Can you think of something? Put your hair in a ponytail? Yeah, what if I took my hair out? Does that change how I look? Yeah. What if I took my name tag off? Does that change how I look? Yeah, a little bit, right? It changes things a little bit. Well, these changes are all on the outside, right? We can see them, right? Maybe if Lizzie put her hair in a ponytail, we could see that. Maybe if she took her glasses off, we could see a difference, right? She wouldn't be able to see. Exactly, she wouldn't be able to see, but we could see that she looked a little different, right? So those are all changes that we make on the outside. But when we love Jesus, we change on the inside, where people can't always see it, but they can see it in how we behave. What's up? My necklace? Yeah, what if I took that? What if I hit it? Would that change how I look? Yeah, right? You can still see it? Oh, no! No! <laughs> Oh, so you can still see it, but maybe it looks a little different, right? So when we, meet, when we love Jesus, he changes our hearts, and he changes us to be a lot more loving and to care about other people. And today we're going to talk about a man named Paul in the Bible, and he changed in a really, really big way. And I'm not talking about taking his hair down and taking his name tag off. He changed in a way that he started loving people. He doesn't have a name tag? How do you know? Were you there? No? Maybe he was walking around with a name tag that says, my name is Paul. You never know. He probably didn't have a name tag. I'm just being silly. Um, so we're going to talk about how Paul changed today. Does that sound good to you guys? All right. We're going to pray, and then we're going to go ahead back, okay? All right. Dear Lord, we thank you for this time together this morning to worship you and learn more about you. Thank you for sending us Jesus to save us and to change our lives. Help us to live each day with the love of Jesus in our hearts. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. We're going to head back to Children's Church. Pitney for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers, silent prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as, you own, as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in, et in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May the ushers please come forward to receive our tithes and offerings. generous God, as we gather to offer our tithes and offerings, we are reminded in the words of the Apostle John about the word of life. Just as your word brings light into our lives, may our giving be an act of generosity, a reflection of the abundance of your grace and love. We thank you for the forgiveness and grace offered through your Son, Jesus Christ. As we give, may we also steward these gifts wisely for the betterment of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
hold up. Okay. Good morning. How's everyone doing today? Good, 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 good. If you could bow your heads, please. Dear, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We, we glorify your name for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon our lives, Father. Father, we just pray that the word that's about to go forth, Lord Jesus, comes from you and not from myself, Father. I pray that I will decrease and that you may increase, Father. I pray that every word spoken is of you and not of the flesh, that, the, that this congregation is inspired by your word, Lord, is that, that they are renewed by your Lord, I mean, your, your word, Lord Jesus, and they are given life, Father. And we just thank you and we glorify your name. These are many blessings we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It was the evening of the first day of the week. The followers had gathered together with the door locked because they were afraid of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said, may you have peace. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the followers saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Then Jesus said to them again, may you have peace. As the Father was sent, has sent me, I also am sending you. When Jesus had said this, he breathed unto them. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you say that people are free of sins, they are free of them. If you say that people are not free of sins, they still have them. Thomas was not with them when Jesus came. He was one of the 12 followers and was called the twin. The other followers told them, we have seen the Lord. He said to them, I will not believe until I see the marks made by the nails in his hands. I will not believe until I put my finger into the marks of the nails. I will not believe until I put my hands into his side. Eight days later, the followers were again inside a house. Thomas was with them. The doors were locked. Jesus came and stood among them. He said, may you have peace. He said to Thomas, put your fingers into my hands. Put your hands into my side. Do not doubt. Believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you believe. Those are happy who have never seen me and yet believe. Jesus did, did many other powerful works in front of his followers. They are not written in this book, but these are written so you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. When you put your trust in him, you will have life that lasts forever through his name. The title of my um, scripture today, my, um, my sermon today is, Through Your Pain Lies the Promise. Through Your Pain Lies the Promise. And let me go back. In John 18, John 20, basically this talks about when Jesus rises from the dead. And also talks about when Jesus appears to Mary Magdalena. So this is a little bit after that. So after that, this is what happened. Jesus again identified himself with his father. He told the disciples by those by whose authority he did this work, his work. When then he passed the job to his disciples of spreading the good news of salvation around the world, whatever God has asked you to do, remember that number one, your authority comes from God. And number two, Jesus has demonstrated by words and actions how to accomplish the job he has done. As the Father sent Jesus, Jesus sent his followers, including you. Through your pain lies the promise. Jesus gave his disciples a special feeling of his Holy Spirit, a foretaste of what all who believe would experience at the time of Pentecost. You can find this in Acts 2. And forever after that, to, to, to do God's work, we need the intimacy, love, direction, and enabling power of the Holy Spirit. Avoid trying to do this work in your own strength. Again, avoid trying to do this work in your own strength. Through your pain lies the promise. 
The breath of God has life. The first man was created but did not come alive until God breathed into him the breath of life found in Genesis 2-7. God's first breath made humans different from all other forms of creation. Now, through the breath of Jesus, God imparted internal, eternal spiritual life. With this in, in, in breathing, I'm sorry, in breathing came the power to do God's will on earth. Jesus was given the disciples their spirit power and spirit guided mission to preach the good news so people's sins might be forgiven. The disciples did not have the power to forgive sins. Only God can do that. But Jesus gave them the privilege of telling new believers that their sins have been forgiven because they have accepted Jesus' message. All believers have this same privilege. We can announce forgiveness of sins with certainty when ourselves have come to repentance and faith. Through your pain lies the promise. Have you ever wished you could actually see Jesus, touch him, and hear his words? At times, do you wish you could sit with him and get his advice? Yes. Thomas wanted Jesus' physical present, but God's plain, God is plain and wiser. He has not limited himself to one physical body. He wants to be present with you at all times. Even, even now, he is with you in the, in the person of the Holy Spirit. You can talk to him and you can find his words to you in the pages of the Bible. He can be as, re as real to you as he was to Thomas. Finally. Jesus wasn't hard on Thomas for his doubts, despite his skepticism. Thomas was still loyal to, to the believers and to Jesus himself. Some people need, to, some people need his voice so their doubts can be um, solidified. And if the answers are accepted, then doubt has come at good work. In other words, you can doubt as long as eventually you find out the truth. When you doubt, don't stop there. Let your doubt deepen your faith as you continue to search for the answers. Jesus' resurrected body was unique. It was not the same kind of flesh and blood Lazarus had when he came back to life. Jesus' body was no longer subject to the same laws of nature as before his death. He could appear in a locked room, yet he was not a ghost or an aberration. Because he could eat and be touched, Jesus' resurrection was literal and physical. He was not a disembodied spirit. Some people think they would believe in Jesus if they could see a definite sign or miracle. But Jesus says we are blessed if we can believe without seeing. We have all the proof we need in the world of the Bible and the testimony of believers. A physical appearance would not make Jesus any more real to us than he is now. Through your pain lies the promise. Through your pain lies the promise. But before that, it was through his pain and his sacrifice that, that um, lied the promise for us, to, for our pain. So, through your pain lies the promise. As I was reading and studying out the scripture, and I was thinking, I said, okay, the, the sacrifice that you made, and still through that sacrifice, there were unbelievers in that time. Allow me to see this. Lord, show me a sign. Let me know that you are real. Through your pain. So those who are believers, we've also doubted. We've also doubted. There's not a week that go by that I don't have to come back and say, okay, God. 
any time that I stand before you, I will say this. Every time that I have the honor that pastor gives me to stand before you is that I am a broken man. I'm perfectly imperfect. So I'm not standing here with it all together. So hear me. Through your pain lies the promise. How many times in your life? How many times have you gone up to people who don't believe? Have you spoken? And sometimes in the back of your head, you have doubt sometimes too when you go through something. I tell people it is so easy to believe in God when everything is going well. When everything is together. When your 401k is good. When all is lined up. And I, I, I was, as I'm studying the Bible, I say, how in the world can I make this relevant? Where I need to see, I need to see, I need to feel, I need to understand. And today, I need to feel, I need to see, I need to understand. There are times in my life in which I've gotten on my knees and I said, if it's you, let me know. There are times in my life where I've sat there and said that where well, people have been so mean to me and I'm no one's victim. Where I sit there and say, you couldn't be a, there can't be a God. And next thing you know, you turn around and you get a letter or you see someone who come up and say something to you. People, through your pain lies the promise of God. Through your pain lies the promise of salvation. Through your pain lies it all. Through your pain of not believing. Through your pain of believing. The one thing that we serve is a consistent God. We are the one that's inconsistent. We are the ones that we can, in, 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 inconsistent. I, I think about Jesus. How in the world can you go through that much betrayal and then say, it is finished? How can you go through the backbiting? How can you go through, how can you go through all of that stuff and still say, that's the God that we serve. Consistent. While we are inconsistent. Consistent. While we walk away from him. Prodigal son. Loneliest place in the world is without you. Too many of my days, Lord, I've tried to spend them searching for what I know is only found in you. I strayed so far away, didn't even know you were still there. Deep in my heart was a faint security, and I can almost feel your open arms. And hear you say to me, prodigal son, come back to my love. You are the one that my heart seeks for. Whatever you've done, I don't even remember because you're my prodigal son. So that's the God that we serve. That's the God that we serve. Through his pain has passed on because the thing about it, what you have to understand is this right here. Once, once you take on the mantle of Christ, we accept the pain because we understand the promise. When you say, I am a Christian, you, we are going to be ridiculed, we're going to be talked about, we're going to be, but this is, it comes along with the package. You can't, no one is exempt. It rains on the just and the unjust. And the Bible talks about the flesh must die what? Daily. So every day, we must get on our knees and ask for forgiveness, ask for grace and mercy, but also understand that through this pain that we go through, there's a promise. There is a promise that is so exciting, that is so, that is so mind-boggling. When I, I will look at things and I say, God, I don't even know how you love that way. Because I be getting mad. <sighs> I don't get it. And then I say, wait a minute. I do get it. 
She died for me. Died for a sinner like me. Died for someone like me. No, no job, no degrees, no any level of this world that you can reach in life will ever measure to the love of Christ. Whatever. We are here because we are servant leaders. So whatever you have, our job is to create the environment to give away and give God the glory in it. In all things, give God the glory. Because the minute we are like, it's us, we lose our way. Every time. Every time. It's, it's so funny. Um, it, was, um, it was last year, Christy and I were in New York. And um, we're walking. And just got through doing a gig. And then you're like, and as I'm walking, I'm seeing this man lying on the ground. Homeless in New York. And I took my jacket and I gave it to him. Not because I'm so great, because I'm not. Because I also realize through your pain lies the promise. Sometimes it, it was not even about the jacket and whether he wanted it. Sometimes God will put somebody in your life just to see how you react. God will put somebody in your path just to see. The pain is to promise. That's the most exciting thing about it. The pain is to promise. But isn't God so great that even when we doubt, he didn't hold it against us. Don't hold it against you. Wow. Through your pain lies the promise. Tesco Willow, we've gone through some ups and downs. We've gone through some ups and downs. Someone, um, I spoke to someone who's been a member of this church years ago. And she's now in, um, and she's probably online listening to me. But I'm going to talk about it. Uh, she's, um, she's overseas. Alex, what? Was she in? Because I told you about what, what was her name? You remember? Well, she's across the cross. She's somewhere. Uh, <laughs> what happened was I reached out to her um, and because we had spoken a long, long, long time. And she says to me, I hear you at Tusca Will. I said, yes, ma'am. I used to be a member of that church. And that church is beautiful. The people are beautiful. She's in Winnebago, Trinidad. She's in Trinidad. And she was a part of the choir. And when her husband died, Tusca Willis Choir went to Pine Hills to sing. Is that ring a bell for anyone who's a part of this church? Lynn, Lou Ann Campbell, Lou Ann Campbell. Yeah, Lynn Campbell. And Lynn had, and she was like, just beautiful and glowing about this church and the wonderful memories. I'm telling this through your pain. You need to understand that you have a history. And sometimes, Tuscarora, we need to be reminded of that. We're beautiful people. We're beautiful people. God-fearing, God-loving people. For someone, you've let that sort of impact on their life. It's powerful. So through your pain lies the power because whatever we go through, we understand that we are his. We belong to. So therefore we are. And so this is for somebody in here. I don't know who it's for. But hear me, when I spoke to her, and she was so, and it touched my heart because I hadn't spoken to her in a couple of years, and we just caught up. And what a beautiful soul. And if she ever come back, I'm going to get her right back here. Because you need to see Tuscarora. Even through everyone's pain, 
she understands the, the, the spirit of Christ that is in this church. That is in this church. So, through all of that, we don't allow money, we don't allow situations, we don't allow anything that's going to take away from the number one mission of this church to create an environment where souls are safe and souls are saved. Safe and saved. Because all of us are broken. None of us is perfect. When I walk out the door, I may trip and fall. Ooh, imperfection. Because I'll trip over air. So understand this. Through pain, there's the promise. Through pain, there's the promise. Through pain, you believe. Through pain, you understand. Through pain, there's something that's always come out, it's going to come out of pain. How many times did you feel like just quitting? Anything? Raise your hand. Oh, all these perfect folks. <laughs> Thank you. At the cantata, I heard things. I was very proud, but the core director in me was like, oh, we need to fix that vowel. But I heard somebody else say, but you're here to serve me. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. In closing, when we talk about through your pain lies the promise. God has not forsaken us. God has not left us. With everything in you, what I'm telling you, I'm also preaching to myself. Because sometimes you got to practice what you preach. I'm no better than you. I'm no better. I call it a time and a season. That's it. We all have a time. We have our season. So I, strong, I strongly want to encourage all of you. Your pain does not mean quit. Your pain means there's a promise. Your pain, is, it directs us. It inspires us. The pain is, I got to go back to school tomorrow. The pain is, I'm ready for school to be over with. <laughs> I love my students, but I'm done. The promise is, it's going to be in in a couple weeks. <laughs> Just want to throw that in there because it was funny. <laughs> Let's bow heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the word that, um, that went forth. Father, I pray that it touched someone, Lord Jesus. Um, thank you for your pain. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your love, your unending love, for, Father, your love that passes all understanding, Father, that would take us as we are. Oftentimes, people say, come to church dressed. You say, just come. Thank you for accepting us as we are and that we continue, will we'll continue to grow in that as a church to open these doors and accept, accept people as they are so they can see the glory of Christ. Not us, but you. These men of blessing prayer in Jesus' name, amen. That's it. I knew he couldn't give us a sermon without singing part of it, too, you know. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Reddy. We appreciate you so much, and we are so blessed as a church, and I'm sure everyone agrees with me that he's with us leading this choir and many other things. Thank you. <clears throat> Let us stand for the affirmation of faith. The Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, 
and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence we shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant, to our, made covenant to our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave it to you, broke the bread, gave it to you, and said to his disciples, take, eat, this bread, I'm trying to do two places here, but we'll get after this, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, and for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. 
and in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with the Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Yeah, um, will those uh, people coming that will be serving the elements come forward, please? Set in the Methodist Church that we have open communion. Uh, anyone here who would like to partake of the body and blood of Christ uh, is welcome to. And uh, we would encourage you to please come forward for this, uh, knowing that for each person here, sacrifice of Christ has died for you. Go! 